struggle trying to come up with how to embellish a project or even get started making a craft project? Well, in today's video, I'm going to help you solve that problem. Hi, I'm Marcia. Welcome back to Markets of Sunshine. And today is all about crafting and we're going to alter playing cards. I told you we were going to do that in the last video. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're returning, thank you for being here and you are ready to go with this alter playing card. So <clears throat> I have playing cards, but I didn't <laughs> want to sacrifice them for the project. So I just took out of the deck these instruction cards that I won't ever use. So it was two different decks. This one was Discover Florida. This was the back of the card, and then this one was the other one. And then this is just a photo credits for all the different pictures that were different parts of Florida. I think that was what was on the backs of these. So it's, it's, it's all good. So I'm going to decorate this side, and then this side will be covered with a solid paper. So I was going through an old Scrabble box, somebody I either picked it up at a Goodwill or somebody gave it to me. And in the bottom, out under all of the um, boards, were this stack. So I'm assuming this person, Donald Smith, <laughs> owned that one Scrabble game and this was left in the bottom. And you know how you keep score or whatever when you're playing. So I thought, well, how cool is that? So I love this here. So I'm going to use this and cover up the backs of this. Okay, so I thought that would be really nice. And this is nice writing paper. And then next I wanted to show you, I had talked to you in my last video about my two friends, Marilyn and Char, who were from California and they were artists and pet portrait artists. So this is one that Marilyn did and her name is Marilyn Bibb and she's originally from Paramount, California. I found out today when I was talking to her, but she could not remember the name of the place where her and her sister it was in the 70s, possibly even in the 60s, when they would go to this one area of California, obviously near Paramount, where they lived, and lo, I cannot, for the life of me, and she couldn't, but she's going to ask her son, <clears throat> and he's like around 60 years old, so uh, he traveled with his mother and his aunt around the United States with um, the art shows that would go to the big malls, indoor shopping mall art exhibits, and that's how they made their living for decades. So they were commissioned by their customers, and <clears throat> this is covered in plastic just to protect it, and it's a, it's a print, it's not the original. I don't think it's the original. <clears throat> I can't tell because, excuse me. <clears throat> The velour is gray, so that's why I'm looking at this, but they may have just had it printed on there, but I'm not going to open it up. And this is like a real burlap type material, and then this is the um, mounting material. I forget what you call that, but anyway. They used to have it professionally done, and then she bought a machine where she started making them herself. But either way, so this one... There's no year on here, but I lived with them when I was um, back in, in the, or my early 20s, back in the 80s, early 80s, and um, they had already uh, painted this. Just look at the detail on these two coyotes. Absolutely. I mean, look at the tongue color, the mouth color, uh, the vividness of the eyes. And this is painted, hand-painted. Look at the fur texture. I mean, just talented, talented women. Absolutely, absolutely adore them. So I wanted to share this one with you. So the next video, I'll share one of, from Charlotte. It was We called her Char, but Charlotte um, Henson was her name. And Charlotte did per, a lot of uh, portraits for Hollywood families. So Frank Sinatra's first wife, and I don't know why, but Nancy's coming to my mind. So I, I didn't even look it up to see if that was his, her name, but it's just what stuck in my mind. And uh, whatever pet that she owned, and 
Char went to her house, got to meet her, got to talk with her. She said she was a really, really nice person and just enjoyed that whole relationship while she was, you know, painting it and then getting it back to her original finished product back to her. And there was many, many other ones, but she's the only one that comes to my mind right at the moment. And then here in Florida, when they moved to Florida um, in the 80s, that's when I met them, my family met them. And then there was, uh, we were in Altamont and Wakiva Springs Marina, if you're ever familiar with that area, that's where the Wakiva Springs State Park is located. And there's a restaurant there right on the river. And she talked to the owners and they allowed her to set up her artist easel and she would do portraits, people portraits, but then people found out she was a pet artist because she would have a display and um, so she got commissioned there as well and the uh, Greyhound uh, Rescue Organization had her uh, commissioned her to do portraits for them as fundraisers so she she did for many many very um, well established and very very um, well-known people in the community so uh, Marilyn I know as well did too, but Charlotte, um, I just remember her telling me stories and, and um, actually being there to witness myself that she was commissioned to do these things. Now, next up, I'm getting ready to send off an order from my vintage shop, Pioneer Fundraiser, and these vintage Nancy Drew books sold, and then a vintage uh, vase sold that's a German vase, so I'm going to get that order ready to go for that customer. So thank you very much for your order and your support to my Etsy shops. I really appreciate it. And you did. You put a smile on my face today and joy in my heart. When I heard that ka this morning, I was so thrilled. I said, oh, somebody just made my day. Thank you. Brighter. And then next up is an update for the giveaway, the 400 subscriber giveaway. So for some reason, it's like inching at a snail's pace. So I'm asking you again to share, 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 comment, like on the video, and that will help grow this little crafting friend community here. And I look at you as my crafting buddies, my crafting friends. I've said that in some of my earlier videos, but you're not followers to me. You're my crafting friends and buddies. And I've gotten to know some of you very well and very personally through my Zoom crafting time. And on the Mary Jane's Farm Forum, I know ladies on there, oh goodness gracious, going back to 2008, because I have some of these magazines back that far, and um, maybe even earlier than that, because I've already um, gifted off a lot of these. So to anyone who is watching, but also my Mary Jane Farm sisters, Farm Girl sisters, and then she does have a sisterhood, and I am in the sisterhood. And um, so I have several of the back issues available. And when you subscribe to my channel, like this video, go to the 400 subscriber video, which will be in the end card of this video. So you go back and watch that. Uh, watch to the end, and then you'll be able to see that. And you can click on that link. And then comment on this video and the 400 subscriber video and share it to social media and all of that helps me to grow more friends here on my channel and then in addition to the crafters companion card making kit that I'm giving away to one person then I will have these magazines so I have one two three four five six seven so I have seven more gifts that seven more people have an opportunity to win one of these magazines. Okay, so this first one, I cut out this cover part here. So I went through to see, did I do any more tearing out or cutting? And I don't see anything. But, you know, don't quote me on that. But as I, like I'm saying, I'm, I'm going through it. I don't see any torn pages here. And I don't see anything else cut in the magazine. So as far as I can tell, this one is, you know, intact other than that front cover. 
All right, but this is this is still you know, very good, very usable. You can use it for all the recipes that are in here, uh, for the um, crafting tips that are in here, for the organic lifestyle tips that are in here. There's just a plethora of wonderful information that you will find in here. Wonderful stories, products that you'll be introduced to. So here's one of the craft projects here. You get to find out how to make that. All right, so there's two of those available. The second one is completely intact. No torn pages. There's several of these, you know, subscribe to her magazine will be in there. So those will be left in there. Okay, so this issue is 2013 saying yes issue. So it's choosing backyard chicken. <laughs> choosing your backyard chicken. Upcycled paper crafts. DIY rugs. Scrumptious spring rolls. Glitz, glam, and junk. Uh, round top Texas. Map quilts. So, I mean, such a beautiful variety, but it's an everyday organic lifestyle magazine. Okay, so this is food celebration, passionate gardening, nostalgic crafts and stitchery, 2008 issue of, called Lady Slipper, October, November. And so this one's available. Let me go through here. Double check again. Because I did take some of the magazines and I did deconstruct them and use them in some of my crafts when I made my evergreen fabric cover journal. I did take one of the magazines for that. Okay, so that one looks okay, good. This is a very coveted magazine. And it's not all of these are out of print, out of circulation. You can't get them anymore. So this one is like, I know, <laughs> the farm girls will be tripping over each other to get to this one. And what I will do, so if you're watching, you've watched this whole video all the way through. If you comment in the comments below which issue that you like, the first person to comment, subscribe, like, and share, all that good stuff, then go over to my blog. That's where you found the link from Mary Jane's Farm Forum. I put my blog link there. It's in the description of the giveaway as well. And I started a whole new giveaway because the other one had ended and I didn't reach 400 subscribers yet on my uh, channel. So until I reach 400 subscribers, you will have to re-enter that raffle copter on my blog because they only allow you to have it open for a short period of time. Now, I'm only 12 subscribers away. Certainly, we can reach that before the end of this month. And I think I have it extended till the first week of April. So, it, I mean, we can do it. We can do it. Farm girls plow through. Come on, we can do this. So I need your help, though. This is called the Simply Bee Issue, the spirit of the beehive. And I know one of my uh, Instagram friends, Winnie, Winnie Bees. I don't know if it's Winnie's Honey Bees or Winnie Bees or anyway. So anyhow, but um, she's the only she's the only bee uh, shop on Etsy that I know. And um, but anyway, so any of the farm girls would absolutely love this. And again, this one, I'm going to look through it, and I know I don't remember coming in here and cutting any of this. Why this one was so special, not only for the bee theme, but it has a bread recipe for making your sourdough bread the old-fashioned way. So you don't put yeast in it. You let the natural yeast in the air do the trick, do the job. So let me see if I can find that recipe. Where is that in here? Okay, okay. No need artisan breads, minutes a day, organic, of course. All right, so let's come over here. Let's see where that is at. Okay, 66. Let's go to 66. Alrighty, so here's the whole recipe. I know I've got my little papers in here tucked away for the doing the whole thing. So start to finish, how you do it, what you do, and this is all Mary Jane style, straight from her, and then, you know, questions, the whole nine yards. If you want to add and flavor it, 
and then here's your final finished piece. So I know again, like I said, and then this beautiful darling little bee um, hand stitching. Somebody sent me, oh, you know what? Now I recognize that. Somebody sent me something with this on there. I didn't realize that was probably one of my farm girl friends that did that. Okay, so here's all the cute little bees and you can um, copy those and do your own, your hand stitching. You can put that on any of the projects, but anyway, this is just absolutely, you're going to love that. Okay, so there's 18 honey, organic honey recipes in that one. This one is the 2013 June, July issue, midnight hour issue. How to build a 198 backyard greenhouse, muffin tins, DIY bed skirt, rebel quilting. This is where I got my rebel quilter label from. So let's see. Did I cut it out of here or is this the second issue? Because I, having my Etsy shop, I was able to sign up for a retailer's um, resellers account and I used to um, be able to get these magazines and then resell them but then Mary Jane just did away with that and because um, there weren't very many that were doing it anyway so but for the longest time and then she quit doing the back issues and she just sold them herself and um, so now there's no more she just you know change things a little bit. All right, let's see where I found that Rebel Quilter. Isn't that cutest little baby? Just adorable baby goat. Just love these things. Okay, so where's my Rebel Quilter? I know it was in here. Okay, here. So this right here is what I took out of another magazine, and that was the label that I used for my Evergreen Junk Journal. Okay, so that one's that. Okay, this is April, May 2013. This is Meg, Mary Jane's daughter. And this is the Motherload issue. So get your Farmer Jane on. Open a produce stand, rebuild a farm, run a ranch, candy jars, syrups, and desserts. Seven ways to pamper your mother and magical quilts. Again, I just want to go through just to show you that there's they're all intact. Okay. And then last, oh, okay, so this one I did tear a page out of here. Okay, so whatever that was, that is gone. So that's the first page that I've seen that I actually could find a remnant that I tore something out of. All right, so here's another one. That one's been, okay, and I cut something right here. All right, so that now that issue, you know, has got... Some of the things missing in that, but that's what looks like only two things. Now, this is a very special recipe issue. Okay, so there's 50 baking mix recipes included, and it's from using Mary Jane's um, budget mix, and it's uh, one is wheat, and then she has a gluten-free with rice flour, and um, I've used the gluten-free one. Very, very good and you get excellent results every time. Okay, so this was, let me see here, I don't see a September 15. Let me see what year, is there gotta be a year in here somewhere. <clears throat> so this is not part of the magazine line, this was a special issue. And, uh, but I have two, so I'm going to gift one of them to one of you lovely ladies. Isn't that pretty? All right, so I'm not going to go through here because I already know I have not done anything to this book. I've not ever, ever cut it or done anything with it. So um, it's going to be beautiful, completely intact. And let me just tell you how many pages there are in here. So 192 pages. There's a gift order form, maybe for the budget mix, probably all the information, her website where you can order the budget mix and all that kind of thing in here. So that's pretty good. Oh, her chocolate. Oh, I wish she would bring that chocolate back. She discontinued the chocolate. I used to get that all the time for my daughter. She loved it. 
But with the heat, you know, you can't, you can only mail it in the winter, so that was kind of like the bugaboo. Okay, so then that's up for grabs. So that's being added to the little mix there. So now that ends the blog, craft blog update of the giveaway. So now we're going to jump right into the altering cards. Let me move these out of the way. And my picture. We'll be doing some stitching on the machine, so even though I just sat that in my chair at the sewing machine, I'll have to move it again in a minute. <laughs> Okie dokie. Now, I did finally, thanks to my friend Annette, figure out how to change the vertical recorded video, because I record it horizontal. When it uploads, it switches to vertical, but there is a little button that I found with her direction, and it says rotate. So I rotated it, and bing, it went back to horizontal. So isn't that beautiful? I'm so happy. Yay! Thank you, Annette. Everybody give her a round of applause. That's what friends are all about. When I posted in my video that I don't have anybody to ask, and I'm Googling, and I don't get find anything, and I don't know what to do. So bear with me, and she stepped up to the plate, and she Googled it, and she said, do this, do this, and do this. So I did, and by Jinky Joe, it worked. So thank you so much. So one of my spiritual projects coming up is the suit of armor. So I loved this picture, and I'm going to actually, um, I don't know if I'll copy this. I, I'll have a printer in a couple weeks um, that I can start copying things again. And um, so I don't know if I'll copy these out. Or try to just like, you know, use it and then draw it is what I'm thinking I'll do because I'll just copy this because this is an upcoming study article. I don't want to do anything to it. And I figured maybe under the children's section there may be a suit of armor activity there that I'll just take that and use it for crafting. Why not? It's perfectly fine. So our um, suit of armor it consists of the large shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, sword of the spirit, See here, there's some missing. Yeah, that uh, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, and our feet shod in readiness to declare good news of peace. So I'm really looking forward to studying this lesson, but I wanted to just give you a heads up that this is going to be a future project, and I'm going I have a, something exciting I'm going to share with you when we're going to work on this. So, and Annette, you're going to love it. Just wait. All those things you've just ordered, your markers. And your latest little goodie that you shared and we talked about and you said you just didn't have patience. Oh, oh, oh wait till you see how we're going to use that, incorporate this, because I love calligraphy. I've been, I've, Marilyn, my friend, she taught me calligraphy. We took classes. And when I lived with her, of course, because they're artists, you know, <laughs> like my daughter, you know, people who are natural artists is like, oh, yeah, it just comes easy to them. So we did take courses. We went to the mall. We're going back. Let's see, my daughter was born in the 1990, and she was still young when we went to the mall. It was the Sanford Mall, I think, if I'm remembering correctly, and um, took courses there from a lady. We did it for like, I don't know, four, four or six weeks. It was fun. So Marilyn and Char and my daughter and myself, and we just had a good old time. Don't remember if I took my niece or not. I can't remember that, but anyway, so we're going to have fun, so don't. Don't fret. We're going we're gonna to be using that, and we're going to be incorporating it with our spiritual um, journaling and all that kind of thing, too. So it's going to be wonderful, fantastic. So one of the previous Mary Jane magazines, don't ask me which one. I just went through it today, and I just tossed it in the garbage. I'll have to get it back out. So I went through that magazine, and these are all the beautiful goodies that I was able to take out of that magazine. Aren't these gorgeous? So we're going to incorporate these into the project today. Of course, this one's too big. This one would work. The birdie is too big, and otherwise his head's gonna go off the top. And then this this bird would work. And but this window isn't this just lovely? I have that just when I saw that I said, okay, this is a this is a project we're gonna make. We're gonna duplicate this whole thing in a future project. Wait till you see what we're gonna do. It's gonna be exciting. Okay, so I'm gonna set that over here. That's gonna be there. Okay, this border, I don't know, I might be able to incorporate that today. And then bits and pieces of this. So this little bit of a picture here, 
this little bit of a picture here. Um, maybe this silhouette of this could work and maybe that little bit and you know little bits and pieces here. Okay, so that's what we're going to do here. But these are just these are too good. They have to stay like this. I'm not going to not going to do anything here. This obviously can be cut off, fussy cut around her. Okay, so we're all good now. So I just wanted to show you that. And I'm going to start taking and putting these pieces for now. And I was inspired by Pam of the Paper Outpost. I subscribed to her channel and her newsletter. She's here in Florida. I think she's in South Florida. I'm in Central Florida. I'm up near Daytona. And I think she's, I don't know if she's on the West Coast. Where are you, Pam? Are you on the West Coast? Or the East Coast? I think she's West Coast. But anyhow. So, I'm um, going to put these over here. Okay, those are going to go there. So, she had been saving things in a Ziploc bag as well. And she just did a whole spring cleaning. I don't know how the woman did it in such a fast you know, short period of time, but when you have your health, you know, if I didn't have Lyme disease, I'd be right keeping up with all you guys, but Lyme just sucks your energy right out, so I'm very limited with what I can do, and I can do it like in short spurts, and then that's it, I'm gone for the rest of the day, so, um, anywho, she had these gorgeous, um, metal tens, now my friend did give me one, Pam's were oval, but the one my friend gave me, it's a, like, it looks like a purse, like, like a bag, actually, and it's a farm theme, Pam's is a farm theme, metal, <clears throat> and, uh, but she just was, you know, using it to, to prettyfy up her office and her desk, and of course, her crafting room is like, probably, I don't know, I'll have to ask Pam, what is her size, but anyhow, it seems like it's bigger than mine. <laughs> She's got these huge double windows. I have one one little window in my office. This is, I think, like a 10 by 11 is my craft room. And she has this huge furniture there. So her room, it has to be like probably the size of my bedroom, which my bedroom is, I think, like 12 by 13. And just believe me, those couple extra feet make all the difference in the world. And she has the tens and all her little bits and pieces like this. She called them stickers. I don't know if they already have adhesive on the backs or whatever, but she had a ton of that stuff in there where I use the clear containers. So I, but I will put this in here and then I'll put it in the clear containers, but I'm going to start saving and salvaging all of my little bits and pieces like this into individual Ziploc bags. So I wanted to share that tip with you. So let me show you here what we worked on yesterday. Like I had this little piece left over, this little piece left over, this little piece left over. All these little pieces, you know, see, bits and pieces. We always have bits and pieces left over. And then I had this whole set from the farm theme, whatever that was, off of scrapbook.com. And I don't know, like I said, I don't think Prima does anything like that in that theme. But don't. Don't quote me on that because I can't remember. I don't remember who it was, but anyhow. So I'm going to take all these little scraps, and then now they're going to go in this bag as well. Because See, these are dangerous. These are the ones that can get just pushed, and next thing you know, they're all crumpled, and they're just ruined, and that's not good. So I'm going to save that for today's project. That might come in today's project. Wax paper, of course. This is going to come in today's project. Uh, this is some artist paper. That might come in today's project. This tea dyed envelope is going to go back on the shelf with the other ones. And my little silver metallic letters are going to go back where it belongs. So I just completed an order for three of my mini journals. Thank you very much, Regina. I appreciate that so much showed me some love, and I just absolutely can't thank you enough. It really, really helps and makes me know that I can keep making my videos because you guys appreciate me and what I do here. And all of this takes time and effort and energy, you know, and even if you can craft yourself, but the fact that somebody takes the time to show you this is going to be a future you know what, one of my pocket junk mail envelopes for a project. 
And then this beautiful collage is going to be used in a future project. So I'm going to put that here. This is my daughter's artwork. I shared that with you the other day. April, starting in April, hopefully I'll remember to do that the first week of April, which is just in a, what, another week. A week and a half, I'm going to do um, start an account on Buy Me a Coffee. And then as a subscriber to that, you will be receiving two of these original artwork digital prints every month. So this would be the first month. These two are going to be what, you, what you'll receive for that subscription. So, and I don't know what I'm going to start it off with it yet. So I don't know if there's a minimum. I don't have any idea how that works. I have to go over there and check it all out. I've just seen other ladies doing it on their channel and I said you know what I like that whole idea I didn't want to do the patreon that just seemed too much you know why would I want to do another have a whole other place to do videos I don't <laughs> that's just double the work so I'm like no that one that one wasn't that one wasn't flying I wasn't going to do that all right so I'm trying to clear this one side off and then just look at my little bits and pieces that I have which I have a ton more so okay all right so let's just set this this came off, this was a label off of a vintage fabric that um, just sold. And I thought, oh, you know what? I'm going to keep that and I'll keep it in to use it in my project for today. All right. So this is going to go back over here. These are all the things, all the things that I'm thinking of. All the things for today's project. Okay. So now we're going to get our playing cards and at the end of the video. So hang around. And you're going to find out what is going to be the next project. So hopefully what I ordered today will be here in time. Let's see, will it get here tomorrow? Uh, no, because I was going to order it off Amazon. But the particular thing and from the particular company, it was not on Amazon with the bundle that I wanted to get. So, but anyway. So the next project is... It will, it's going to be fun, but just hang around till the end and you'll find out what that is. Okay, doke. Now, um, the, I'm going to be using and incorporating different techniques that I've seen on different channels. So hold on just a second. Let me get everything out and, and lined up. So I hope you're having fun by now, and I hope you're going to get your playing cards out. Go get your playing cards, and it can be anything. It could be a deck of Uno. It can be kids flashcards, whatever you have, even if it's a three by five card. I mean, I went, before I found these in the deck, I was going to just say, okay, you know what? Instead of altered playing card, it was going to be an altered three by five card, which, oh, that's going to be the next video. I just gave it away. Alrighty. Don't worry. Hold that thought. Okay, so hopefully this will turn out well because now the shadowing from the sun is coming in. I've got all the different lights going on here. So bear with me with that. So hopefully it's not going to overpower us. So the first thing we're going to do is take a vintage book page. This is from an Alice in Wonderland vintage book. 1960. Wow. Even before I was born. How about them apples? Okay, so... Do I want with the image of her or just the words? Let's just find out what it looks like. Or maybe not. Okay, boy, they didn't want those pages to come out of there, did they? Okay. I said those kids are going to be handling that. We're going to make sure it's not going to rip. Okay, so let's start with this one. I don't know which side I want to go with. Okay, that side I was going to put the paper, so I guess we'll go with this side. All right, so this is going to be just a fly by the seat of my pants kind of a deal. So I am going to go here on like a triangle shape, and then this corner in a triangle shape, just with the scotch glue stick, here in a triangle shape. And here in a triangle shape. So let's see what we get. This one. 
you didn't see the string, but I see the string. Okay, now we're just going to take paper, book page. And we're going to lay it. Uh, I think I want the wording. I'm just going to like this. Rub a dub dub. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is just trim around the whole card. And when you hold it up like this in front of a window for the light, you can see right through the paper. So that's how I was able to do that so well. So I'm just going to trim off any excess right there, the little snippet on that corner. Okay, so now what we're supposed to do, we're going to come in here, going to remove. Where we didn't glue. Okay, so now we've got that part. That's okay. Never fear. We're just going to start collaging is what we're doing. So we're going to collage this card with different layers. But just to make it, you know, interesting, we don't want to use the same thing all over it. Put a piece of this on. And I can just go ahead and finish filling in all of this space in the middle. Always remember to put your lid back on these because they dry out. Okay, and then we're just going to come right here on top of that, even it up with the other one, smooth that in place, then trim that excess off, and then we're going to come in here, oops, come in here with another piece, get my paper towel, always have a roll of paper towels, or wet wipes handy. I have my bottle of water over in the corner. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just cut this map section off. And then I can just work right with that. I don't want the whole big piece flapping around. Okay, so now, let me think, let me look at this. How do I want it? Okay, well, first of all, I don't want it upside down like that. Okay, so I want this here. Okay, uh, let me think about how do I want to go about this little project. Okay, so from there to there. Turn it off right about there. And then right about here. Okay. Now, right about there. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So I'm just going to flip this piece over, and now we're going to glue this whole piece. This is how I pick it up. Just use the glue to pick it up. Okay, so I'm going to come right here. And I'm going to go down right about there. A little bit over here. Okay, very good. That's how quick and easy it is to alter a playing card. Fun, fun, fun. All right, so now we're going to come in here with our ink, and then we'll just add some 
vintage to it using the antique linen. These are my two go-tos and the vintage photo. So I like to mix the two. And where I have the pieces where they come together, where they join, that's what I'm going to add the ink. And then of course to the, all of the edges. in the direction of the paper this way and then going over this one going to have some fun in the next videos. Absolutely wonderful. Cannot wait. Once my little surprise gets here, we're going to have some calligraphy fun. So get those markers ready. Get your calligraphy out. And in the next video, we're going to alter the 3x5 cards. Okay, very good. Very nice. Now let's take a look at which one of these we want to put. We want the bird. I like the bird. Or I could come in here with just the little image of the girl and the cow. That's cute. Planter box. That would be nice as well. Okay, so we're going to cut out some excess here. We just want just a little bit. That is really cute. I can trim that down a little bit more. Off of that side and a little bit more off of that side. Okay, that's really cute. So just a tag. This is going to be a tag, so the back will be covered. So we're going to just assemble it piece by piece, bit by bit. Okay, so now I'm thinking we're going to put this on something that's going to make it stand out. So that would be good, but of course we're going to ink it all up. So that's just a wee bit small. <clears throat> do I mind that it's a little bit small? What do we want to do? What do we want to do? All right, let's just keep it like that. It doesn't need to be too big. Just a wee bit. Okay. First thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here and ink all these edges first before I put the image much easier. So do you have spring fever yet? Are you thinking of all the ways you can, <clears throat> excuse me, clean up your craft room and your home? Well, I'm downsizing. My husband and I are stuck in this house, so I can't handle a move, and he doesn't want to put me through a move. So unless we could find something somewhere, I wouldn't mind going into... Um, not an apartment, you know, because I don't know. He would have to become like 
debilitated. <laughs> he would never stand for not having his own home. He can. He's a strong man. So hopefully he's going to stay strong. But I know things happen. We find that out all the time. Bless the hearts of all my friends who have situations like that with their loved ones. My heart really goes out to you. Okay, I like that better. Okay, that looks really cute. Okay, now we're going to glue these. So I'm going to glue that to there. So we just gifted um, our leather. We had two leather sofas. I call it a couch. I don't know. What's the difference between a couch and a sofa? I didn't look that up. It's like, is it the size? You know, why is one called a couch? Why is one called a sofa? I don't know. But anyway, so we told the young man we have a leather couch, and he goes, you mean a sofa? <laughs> so here I am, you know, in my 50s, my husband's in his 60s, and this is a 20-year-old something, so he's like, you mean a sofa? Couch, sofa, what difference does it make? Love seat, now we all know what that is. Okay, yes, that, that's like one terminology. I've never heard it called anything different. Should I round the corners on that? Let's give it a whirl. Let's do it. Since the playing card has the rounded corners, let's just go ahead and round these corners. So we have a living room, dining room combination, so it's a great room, you know. And uh, massive, massive leather sofa that now that we're in this coronavirus, my daughter and son-in-law don't come over as often. So, and they don't come over to hang out and eat and all that like we used to. So that's, you know, crying shame, but what can you do? And uh, so I said, why do I have this big old leather thing? And she's like, Mom, just get rid of it. And when we come over, we'll just use the dining room chairs. And so I said, okay, baby, you know, if you're sure, that's, you know, you'll be comfortable. And she's like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> she wants me to downsize so much. She wants us to move and downsize. But I was like, well, if you can talk your father into that one, you know, it'll be a miracle. So... Anyway, the next best thing was me being able to say, oh, this young man is getting married and gift for his new home and his new bride. And it's, the sofa was in, you know, like immaculate condition, you know. And um, not a tear, not a scratch on it. And beautiful, beautiful, beautiful piece of furniture. So that got rid of a big space in my living room. So, oh, so happy. I can actually walk through my living room now without having to walk around all this furniture all the time. I said, you know, why? So I told my daughter, I said, it kind of takes me back to when we first moved here back in 1990. And she was just a month old. And all we owned at the time, we had a love seat, a hexagon, small hexagon with four chairs, table, and everything had been given to us. We did, I bought a china cabinet for $75, thought my husband would have a heart attack, and um, I have that china cabinet till this day, it's come in very handy because I have lots of china in it crystal and um, that was in our bed we had a bed <laughs> so we had I don't think we even had a chest of drawers I don't even remember having a chest of drawers because we moved out of a um, tiny one bedroom travel trailer and all I had in that was the love seat that table and my china cabinet I might have had a side table. I think that I did have a side. Yes, I had a side table. So there was one side table and our bed. That was it. Everything else was built into that trailer. We didn't have anything else. We didn't have a stove, nothing. 
So when we moved in, the original stove was here, and I don't know if we had to get a refrigerator or if the refrigerator was here, but it was old and needed to be replaced. So anywho, but that's, that's that story. And uh, so now I said this is taking me back to when we first moved in and all we had were these few little pieces of furniture and I had this huge, big, great living room. I'm, gonna, I'm trying to get it back to that. Back to that status. Okay, I like that. I put the little two maps there in the corner. I'm liking that. So I might come in now on the other two corners with a little bit of this yellow that now you can't see that's underneath of there. So I might come in here like this, which I'm thinking I like that. That looks really cute. So this is the fun with these playing cards. Think of it as just making a journal card or a tag that you're using a playing card. That's all it is. So now this one's going to come here, like that. Okay. And I found out if you have a Michaels in your area, not every Michaels carries it, but Anna Griffin has papers at Michaels, and it was on Mazzy's channel. Amity Bloom, um, and so she's in Georgia, and she's saying, oh, I'm just going to Michael's today, and I'm picking up this beautiful papers, uh, what is it, it was die-cut cardstock, it looked like, from Anna Griffin, I'm like, what? And I don't even think it was on Home Shopping Network, I have to go and look, so Tilly, <laughs> you and I are going to be searching for that Anna Griffin die cut papers at Michael's said how dare they not put that on home shopping beautiful beautiful papers I would love to have them in like five by seven so I'm gonna look for a die all right so this is gonna come here this corner oh this is cute I like this I'm liking it what do you think really really cute so now this is picking up oh here's the paper there because I took this off. I'm like, oh, now I can see it. Oh, how come? All right, so then there's that. So check out your local Michaels and see if, all you have to do is go online, go to Michaels, type in Anna Griffin die cut paper and um, see if it's in your area. I would have to drive all the way down to Orlando, I don't even know, like an hour. And I'm thinking, there's no way my husband now if he was working in the area he would do it in a heartbeat for me but I'm like oh yeah honey by the way <laughs> no no I'm not gonna be so dumb as to do that it's just crazy but um I was thinking they might if I call the store and say would you transfer it to the Sanford store the Orange City store where I live might do that so I am going to call and find out but I don't know if they'll do it or not I've done that with like paper pads you know that was like $14 purchase these are only two dollars a piece I don't know if they're going to transfer you know I'll buy it in every color it was pink blue ivory and white I think I don't remember if there was another color oh yes the teal oh that was pretty that's the color Nazzy bought you know how her color tone, she sticks in the same color tones. Um, anyway, so this is this is coming along. Hold it up here so you can see. Isn't that cute? Absolutely cute, cute, cute. Cute as a button. All right, so now we're just going to glue this little guy into place. Let me come over here and eat up some of this. Now the reason why I liked that paper and why I was thinking I was going to get it is because I like the border of that, the edge. And it reminded me of some beautiful um, die cuts that 
my friend on Instagram, Yvonne. We're in our the JW card swap group together. She sent me those, and um, that's what it reminded me of. I could, oh, beautiful. I would love to get a die that will do that kind of thing, and then you can make these beautiful cards just from that. There's a beautiful scallop border, but this is a this is like a the lace on the doily kind of a thing. Similar, similar, not exactly, but similar. And you know, Anna Griffin's all vintagey, so that's my style. Okay, so this is gonna go right about there. I think it's looking pretty good. Yep, right about there. All right. Okay, so we're just gonna do the one today because I don't want this to be a forever video. And by Jinky Joe, I was watching Sean Cannell today and he was saying, Oh, try to make shorter videos. Go down to five minutes, four minutes. I said, you're obviously not talking to craft channel people. How in the tarnation do you think we're going to do a video and show you how to do something in five minutes? Ain't going to happen, Sean. I'm sorry. Okay, let's see. Okay, there you go. I know, I'm trying to get it in the light. Boy, oh boy, is this ever terrible. I hate this when the window, when the light starts coming in. And my, and my tripod's in the way, so I can't even see if I'm showing you or... Hope you're seeing it. Turned out adorable. Absolutely adorable. Okay, now, one last thing. Cover up the back. So this is what I'm thinking. I don't think because that print is not going to cover this. Well, I guess it's... It, it, Oh, no, it does. Okay, that's good enough. Sure. Very good. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to glue this little whole back piece. Of course, like a bunny, so you can get on with your day. Thank you for hanging out with me and watching till the end. I appreciate every single one of you that do that. My husband does it. <laughs> he loves it. He goes, I just love to hear you talk, honey. And I said, yeah, well... You're one of the few, I'm sure. I don't even know if my daughter does that. Love you, babe. <laughs> okay, so now let's see here. I gotta lift this up because I can't see. There we are. Because I don't want I want it above the little book. Come over here to the edge. There we go. And then keep my hands straight. There. Now we rub a dub dub. Okay. All right. Oh, I'm liking this really a lot, very much. I'll try to round that corner a little bit there, like the card is supposed to be. Ever so slightly rounded. Just ever so slightly. And these scissors are not my sharp scissors, so of course. All right, that's good enough. Ever so lightly, little tiny smidgen. These are good for just, you know, paper, but not for fussy cutting, for sure. All right, good enough. So there you have it. There's the back. And that little snip off. Can't, can't leave it like that. Now, this is going to be going into a pocket. So what I'm thinking tomorrow, when we alter the three by five cards, that I'm gonna put a, make a pocket on the front and then these little altered playing cards will go into that and that, that will be, isn't that a great idea? I love that. So an altered playing card into an altered three by five card pocket. All right, so uh, thank you for being here with me today. Hope you subscribe. And I will see you in the next video, and keep creating in the sunshine. Bye-bye!